Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here we'll solve two simple looking equations. The first one is x to the x power is equal to 1, and the second one is i to the x power is equal to 1. They look simple, but they are interesting, and they might also be a little bit tricky. So as always, please pause the video and try them first. But if you don't want to pause the video and try them, fine. I will do them for you guys. Anyway, let's look at the first one. Well, of course you can say x is equal to 1 because 1 to the i's power will give you 1. But we have a lot more than <laughs> than that, okay? So here's the deal. To find out all the solutions, we will have to look at the 1 and bring that to the complex world. And to do so, well, let me show you guys a picture right here real quick. This is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. 1 is right here and we have to write the 1 into the polar form. So we need the r and that's just equal to 1 and also the theta which is going to be 0. But we can of course keep adding or subtracting 2 pi. So the theta here is technically 2 pi n, right? The multiple of 2 pi. So this equation becomes what? On the left hand side we still have x to the i's power and then the right hand side put this into REI theta form. R is 1 so we will just have e and then i times the theta which is 2 pi n like so. So that's for 1 and n is just an integer. Now to get rid of this i right here we can just raise both sides to the 1 over i's power or if you would like you can do the i's rule on both sides yeah, depending on your preference. All right, on the left hand side we have x. On the right hand side, okay, this and that cancel. So we just get e to the 2 pi n power and then again n right here is just an integer. All right, this right here is it. And as I said, this right here is slightly less debatable because now we are going to look at this one right here. If you look at i to the x power is equal to 1, type down to work from alpha. So I'll just put this down right here real quick, okay? Work from alpha says the answers are x is equal to 4n, right? Namely, just multiple of n, okay? All right, but what if we also try to do that? Namely, what if we write the 1 as that? Okay. Let's go ahead and try that. But in this case, we will also have to write the i into its polar form. So to do so, again, let's just go ahead and draw the x and y axis. Technically, this is the real axis and this is the imaginary part. And then here we have the i. And again, we need two things. The first thing is the r. So r is equal to one. And then in this case, the angle theta well, it's pi over 2. That's the first angle. But of course, we can keep adding or subtracting 2 pi. So I'm just going to put on plus 2 pi m. Because I used the n for the 1 already. So let me just use the m. Yep. All right. So here's the deal. i is the same as r e i theta again. So we have 1. And then we just have e. And then i times the angle here. Get the common denominator, so we have 4m plus 1, and then over 2, and then multiply by pi on the side like this. And of course, all this is raised to the x power, so we'll just multiply by x right here. And we have this one right here, and I'm just going to put down the 1, like how we did it over there, and that's going to be e to the i 2 pi n. I use m here, and you have to use n. Right? Two different letters for that. m and m are integers. Okay, now because we consider all the cases, we can legitimately cancel out the e, and then we can just focus on this being equal to that. We can cancel out the i, we can cancel out the pi. So, so far you see, we will just have this guy, which is parentheses 4m plus 1 over 2 x, and that's equal to Okay, so we have the 2 right here, and then the n right here. Again, the pi and i got cancelled out. Okay, now that's what we have. And now, I'm going to solve for x by multiplying the reciprocal of this on both sides. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we have 
2 times 2n, which is 4n on the top, but we have this 4n plus 1 on the bottom. In this case, well, again, n and m are integers, so we should indicate that. But now, what's up with Wolfram Alpha? Wolfram Alpha is only telling me x is equal to 4n, namely multiples of 4. And if you plug, let's say, uh, x is equal to 4, i to the 4th is, of course, equal to 1. I agree. i to the 8th is also equal to 1. I agree. But how can we end up with this, though? Is this legitimate? What do you guys think? Well, we are done with that part. <laughs> I just want to do this. I just want to do this right here so that I can show you how we can rewrite a 1 into that form and we can get all the answer for that, which is really neat. But this is the one I want to discuss with you guys. Right now, we are going to pick some nmm value so that we can figure out what x is and then we'll plug it into the original equation to see if it really works or not. So right here, let's start with something easy, of course, right? Let's pick n being equal to the same as m. Just start with 1 first, right? In that case, we will just get 4 over 5 for the x. So let me put that down right here, 4 over 5. And then I will put this into this x right here. So it looks like we have i to the 4 over 5 power. OK, looks good so far. But the question now is, how exactly shall we evaluate this? Shall we do it this way first? Check this out. Shall I put this down as i to the 4th power? And then after that, I will raise this to the 1 over 5 power. If I do it this way, as you can see, i to the 4th power is just going to give me 1. And then the 1 over 5th power is just the 5th root of 1. And as you can see, this right here does give us 1. Hey, that is so nice. That's very nice. Okay. Good. But you know what though? I want to make a note right here. Whenever we have i raised to a fractional exponent, let's say 4 over 5 here, this right here actually has multiple values. It's a multi-value situation. And you know what? 1 is one of them. So now, the question becomes, would you be willing to accept this right here as an answer because it gives you multiple values and one of them will give you one. If you are willing to accept that, then sure, take this for the answer. In fact, I don't know how you guys feel about this. For this equation here, do you want to just take Wolfram Alpha's answer, meaning that all the multiples of 4? Because if you do that, there's no confusion at all. Check this out. If you have i to the 8th power, this is legitimately equal to 8. There's no other answer. If you have i to the 12th power, this is also equal to 1. There's no legitimate other answers. But i to the 4 over 5, it will give you more answers. So it really depends. I have no idea. Up to you guys. Do you guys want to take this one, or do you guys want to take this one? I would like to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. If you are a naturally curious individual, then Brilliant is for you. It is a math and science website and app with a focus on problem solving, and they have over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. And because you're watching this video, then I know that you like complex numbers. And as you can see on the screen now, their courses have storytelling and interactive templates, so you will really enjoy the learning process. I really like their courses because they challenge me to think, and they often provide a different point of view than what I already know. The best part is that they have something for everyone, regardless what your level is. You can get started with basic algebra or geometry, or advanced topics like calculus or quantum computing. Go ahead and use the link in the description, brilliant.org slash blackpenrepen, because that way you can get a 20% off discount for their annual premium subscription. Thank you for checking them out, and again, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Okay, this is the bonus part. First, let's recall that i to the fractional power m over n has multiple values, and this right here can be computed, or it can be defined as i to the 1 over n's power first, and then raised to the m's power, or you compute i to the m first, and then raised to the 1 over n's power. Keep in mind, this only works when 
m and n are integers and n is not equal to zero and one more thing is that the greatest common divisor of m and n is equal to one that is when you have the fraction m over n it has to be in the simplest form in order for you to, to continue so now this is the bizarre part that you might really i don't know how to describe it just check this out what if we have i to the 4 over pi's power like how exactly shall we compute this then well one way is that maybe we can do this first but by the way though again this is only working for uh, m and m are integers pi is not an integer don't say three but like check this out anyway so we just compute this as okay i to the 4 over pi being equal to i to the 4 first and then raised to the 1 over pi's power so we do that because if we do so well inside here we have 1 and then this is pretty much the pi's root and in the end we'll just get 1 so this right here it seems like hmm, all right this is equal to one like what we did earlier maybe we can argue that it has multiple values as well but um, okay just keep that in mind or for number two let's do it the other way so in that case i to the four over pi's power becomes we should look at i to the one over pi's power and then raised to the fourth power right just keep that in mind for this case though, well, to do this, we will have to write the i in to the polar form. Therefore, it becomes what? You remember from earlier, we got e to the i parentheses 4m plus 1 over 2 pi. This right here is for the i in the polar form. And you see here, we have to raise this to the 1 over pi's power. And then on the very outside, we do this to the fourth power. And technically, we should do this inside out. So when we do that, this and that will cancel. So we just have this, right? So we have this to that power, and we can just multiply the powers. So we can just have a 2 right here. So it becomes e to the 2i, but let me write it as i times 2 times this quantity, which is 4m plus 1 like so and the reason i want to point this out is because to compute this we shall use the euler's formula and then we will get cosine of this right here which is just 8m plus 1 2 i mean then we are going to add it with i sine of 8m plus 2 and you know what's happening this guy no matter what m is Right here, remember m is just an integer. But no matter what m is, there is no way to be equal to 1. So perhaps the question is, which one are we supposed to compute it? Or are they both correct? Or are they both wrong? What do you guys think?